Over the last couple of years, we've seen some pretty dramatic changes in 3D printing in terms of speed and quality, but not all that much has been done with 3D printing filament to match those specs. We now have printers that can easily do print moves over 500 millimeters per second, and we're still using regular old PLA for this, for the most part. And I have something to tell you that you might not know. PLA sucks at high speed. The problem with PLA is that it's actually too easy to print. The very factors that make it useful for high quality and high accessibility also limit its use at high speed. Firstly, it's a low temperature filament, and that is great. You don't need an all metal hot end to print it, but the lower the temperature, the higher the viscosity when it's being melted in the hot end, and that means it's more difficult to extrude. Also, ABS and other films are actually less dense than PLA. Maybe that might not make such a difference, but at 300 millimeters per second, it might be a factor. PLA also has really good layer adhesion. So if you're printing with large layer heights, then there's no cracking, there's no warping. Usually that's not an issue, but it holds on really well to heat. So you need a fan, maybe two fans, maybe more. So the higher the layer height, the more cooling you will need. You don't really need to worry about cooling when it comes to ABS or other filaments like this. Granted, they have other problems, but higher flow is just easier for them. Now, I'm not saying you can't print high speed with PLA. Obviously you can, but quality diminishes and that depends heavily on the filament that you use. For example, some filaments just can't do high flow rate. Here is a print at 300 millimeters per second with ultra satin PLA. It's not anything complex because we're just focused on high speed, but satin in general is just mega balls at high speed. I'm pushing this at 225C, which is a bit much for PLA, even satin PLA, and it looks pretty sad. Extrude! Why aren't you extruding? Anyway, it does depend on the film that you use, because if we use our own Eco PLA and we do the same model, but we up the speed to 500 millimeters per second and the acceleration to 20K, a little bit more on that later, we get this. In these tests, we're pushing flow rather than a high quality test. And that test was actually pushing at about 30 millimeters cube per second. But what if we wanted high quality at high speed? Will it work just the same way as it did in that test? Let me put what I mean by high quality at high speed into perspective. So Bamboo Lab, when they released the X1C, they released a video of a bench sheet printing at high speed and high quality. I think we could pretty much all agree that the X1C is a pretty good printer, 500 millimeters per second at 20k acceleration ams yeah it's it's a good printer but then why didn't they use 20k acceleration in the video they they show that they only use 10k acceleration for this print well because they can't and it's not a limitation of the printer it's actually a limitation of the filament that we use if we want to get a decent print that's why you see all of those speedboat benches printing in under 10 minutes at 500 millimeters per second and 20k acceleration and they look like crap but in fairness, the Benchy is a bitch to print. It's used as a benchmark. It's there to help you tune and adjust your printer. It's small, it's relatively complex. It is not designed to be perfect. So if you're thinking, well, coffee, I actually print lots of stuff at 500 millimeters per second and 20K acceleration, and they look perfect. Look at this vase. Yeah, that's because you're not printing a Benchy. The smaller and more complex something is, the more difficult it is to print at high quality and at high speed. Sure, you can print at crazy high speeds and good quality if your model is not complex and large too. And just look at this thing go. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about complex models. Let me explain. We did a test print with the exact same settings that the Bamboo Lab X1C test had. Everything was the same. We even used a printer with similar speed specs than the Bamboo Lab X1C. This being the Anycubic Cobra 2 Pro. To many of you, you might think that this is just another budget bed slinger. It does look like that. Actually, it looks exactly the same as the Cobra 2, which we also did a review for. However, the Pro has resonance compensation as opposed to the regular Cobra 2, which actually just ran a flavor of Marlin. Not to say that that was a bad printer. It was great. Actually, mechanically, it was one of the best I have ever seen. You can print decently at 250 millimeters per second without resonance compensation if you're not doing something right. Anyway, Anycubic took this printer and just slapped on input shaping, pressure advance, and all the other nifty things, and created a printer that can compete in terms of quality and speed with other high-speed printers, and yet it is under 300 euro. Not bad. Anyway, back to filament. So we printed that Benchy in standard black PLA. The issues are more obvious using standard black PLA, so this is why we use that. The print took around 18 minutes, and this is what we got. 
actually pretty similar to the X1C results. There is a bit of an issue with bridging, but other than that, it was relatively clean. Then we printed a Benchy at the same settings as the Bamboo Lab test, but we made a couple of changes. So one, the speed was set to 300 millimeters per second for every part of the print. The Bamboo Lab test actually reduced the speed for the walls and infill down to 200 millimeters per second. We also did not limit the acceleration, so it goes all the way up to 20K. So 300 millimeters per second at 20K acceleration on this bad boy. It took 13 minutes and it came out like this. This is where high acceleration kicks you in the teeth. First layer is fine, good, but then we hit the overhangs. Overhangs are quality killers when it comes to high speed and acceleration. As the filament is not extruded on the underlying layer, it's at an angle, so it does kind of wobble a bit, which means you need excellent cooling to solidify that as quickly as possible before the next layer comes around. Moving up past the steep overhangs, we can see the quality is good, but then we get to the bridge. Bridges have zero support, so again, you need to go slow or have awesome cooling. The printed part at this height is also pretty tiny in area, so we're only spending seconds at a time on each layer, which means they have less cooling time and we get the inevitable waviness. The main problem we have here is cooling. Most PLA is just difficult to cool. Even since the first Ender 3 came out, you still needed 100% cooling on that. It's still the same, nothing has changed. If you tried this on the X1C, you would have the same results. Printers are certainly catching up. The Neptune 4 series has these really huge, heavy fans that are built into it. I'm thinking that the next generation of 3D printers will have much better cooling. Or maybe we'll just have better filament. So can we actually change our filament to one that's better suited for high speed? Well, yeah, actually, you might know of Creality's Hyper PLA. Eason also have their EPLA HF, but these are high flow filaments. They're not specifically designed for high quality at high speed, just high flow. But now we have Polymaker's Polysonic PLA. They were so nice to send me a couple of spools for testing. It was resealable. And when we do print with exactly the same settings, that being full acceleration, we get this. Now that is considerably better, but I must point out that I am pushing this filament to the absolute max. We are right above what this filament is capable of in terms of volumetric flow. Max flow is 29 millimeters cubed per second, and we are printing at 30. And yes, I hear you, you have a 500 millimeters per second printer. Can I print at 500 millimeters per second? And yes, you can, you just need to keep the flow down. So if I print this at 20K, but this time lower the layer height to 0.15, then my flow is 30 millimeters cubed per second. So we're fine and we get good results. Of course, there is a longer print time, but you still get better quality with lower layer heights. But wait a minute, Coffee, I don't have a super high speed printer. Can I use this on my own printer to get even better quality? Absolutely. And this is one thing that I really, really like about this filament. If you have a printer that has, let's say, medium acceleration capabilities, you might notice that because of this, there are many speed changes throughout the print. When you lower your feed rate, you are also lowering your volumetric flow. This means that the printer spends more time in the hot end and absorbs more heat. This can actually make the filament look kind of glossy. Now, again, I have used black filament here because it is more apparent. The first half was 500 millimeters per second and the second half was 100 millimeters per second. As you can see, it is pretty obvious. The exact same thing happens multiple times during a print where there are inevitable speed changes because of your acceleration limits. In fact, we saw this in the first Benchy test where we limited the acceleration to 10K. Now, if we try the polysonic filament, this happens. Where is it? What just, what just happened? It's gone. So if you're looking to print at high speed, there are some things you need to consider. The first and probably the most important is good cooling. I have high hopes in this regard. The next jump we will see in 3D printing is just more heavy duty cooling. Now this might be as simple as slapping on a load of fans like the Neptune 4 series did. We might see more powerful fans in the future. But as we saw with the Neptune 4 series, statically placed fans on a non-moving part of the printer will not affect quality due to the extra weight. And as inertial mass is a huge headache for high speed printing, I think we'll see more printers with this setup in the near future. Be prepared for louder printers though. Next up is good settings. A lot of slicers these days have great dynamic speed settings instead of an acceleration control, which is becoming more and more redundant as clipper and clipper style printers become more popular. 
Pusher Slicer has a really useful dynamic speed for overhangs, which would be really helpful for the bow of the Benji. You can also lower the layer height, which reduces the thermal mass and allows the cooling to be much more efficient. Thin parts just cool quicker. You can keep the speed of the infill and inner perimeters high while keeping the speed of the outer perimeters low so you can see good quality on the exterior of the model yet keeping prints fast in general. You can also add a custom g-code command for a selection of layers and this is quite useful for the chimney part of the benchy so that all layers above a certain part are at a specific speed. If we insert an m220s50 command at a certain layer all of the layers after will have their speed reduced to 50% of the set speed. Lastly, get a high speed filament like Polymaker's Polysonic PLA to turn your prints from this to this. What about you guys? Do you have any tips or tricks for printing at high speed? If you do, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe for more helpful slash crazy videos. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.